I'll pick this up and check this out. Club Penguin was an MMO developed by New Horizon Interactive, released to the public on October 24th, 2005. Over the years, Club Penguin would become one of the most popular online games among kids and young teens, having over 330 registered accounts in over 190 countries, alongside streams of revenue coming from memberships, merchandise, video games, and TV specials. It looked like all was well for Club Penguin, but fast forward to today and the brand has remained dormant for over 5 years with no sign of the game ever returning. Despite its rise and fall, Club Penguin remains as a nostalgic part of internet history with the player base continuing to stay connected through social media and fan pages, sharing memories and discovering new content from the past. The game continues to exist through private servers which have allowed fans to still play games, although sometimes trusting a private server has its own sets of risk and drawbacks. Hello, my name is Amusing Lewis, and welcome to yet another iceberg video. Today we'll be looking through the layers of Club Penguin. Now this iceberg here is a combination of a few other charts alongside some new topics to keep the video fresh. Before we begin, it would mean the world if you hit that like and subscribe. With that said, let's dive right into layer 1 of the definitive Club Penguin iceberg. Twenty seventeen shutdown. On january thirtieth, twenty seventeen, Disney would announce that the original Club Penguin would be discontinued on the March thirtieth. The reason being that the game was failing to meet performance targets. However, this was also to push players to sign up for Club Penguin Island, a much more advanced successor that we'll talk about in a bit. Club Penguin the next day would throw the Waddle On Party, a celebration of Club Penguin's history and community. And on the last day, new and old players would log in one last time to say farewell to everyone. At exactly 12.01, Club Penguin would officially close all their servers with a final message. The connection has been lost. Thank you for playing Club Penguin. Waddle on. God, I'm already sad. Club Penguin Island. As earlier mentioned, Club Penguin Island was a successor to the original Club Penguin. The game was first mentioned in 2014 under the name Project Super Secret. The game went into development in 2015 and would finally be revealed in 2016. The game would be launched one day after the closure of Club Penguin and would be met with mixed to negative reviews, mainly for it missing key features at launch as well as basic fundamentals being locked under a paywall. The game was originally launched for mobile until a Windows and Mac version was released just 8 months later. Unfortunately, Club Penguin wouldn't last long as on September 27, 2018, Disney would confirm that the game would be discontinued on November 30th. Club Penguin Island is still available to play, albeit in an offline mode. And since then, the Club Penguin franchise has remained in limbo and it is still unknown whether or not Club Penguin would ever return. The Beta Party the Beta Party was Club Penguin's first ever party, only being hosted twice for 2 hours on September 21st, 2005. This was to test the servers to see how many users can log in at once, which peaked at around 155 according to a blog post. This party was also the only legitimate way to acquire the legendary Beta Hat, often regarded as one of the rarest items in the game. Something worth noting is that by looking at the map during the beta, several locations such as the snow forts, the plaza, the beach, the mine were still not present in the game. So it's pretty interesting to see the game at such an early state. Tipping the iceberg. The iceberg in Club Penguin was a hidden room located just east of the map, and just by standing in the room there's really nothing significant. However, as early as 2007, rumors spread that you can actually tip the iceberg if enough penguins stood on one side and danced with a hard hat, where you would allegedly receive rare items and a large sum of coins. This would become one of the most popular urban legends told across online gaming, and with fake video and mock-up images all over the early days of YouTube, it wouldn't take long until Club Penguin started to get in on the fun, such as mentioning it on the newspaper, having a portrait with a UFO in the back, hashtag release the truth, and even have a stamp to tip it. For close to a decade, penguins would host parties to tip the iceberg with no results. When Club Penguin announced that it would be shutting down, the developers made the community's wish come true. And during the Waddle On party, if enough players used their hard hat and drilled, the iceberg would actually tip and what would be revealed is a large dance floor with free blue hard hats alongside a plaque with an inscription that reads, Together, we can build an island, create a community, change the world, and even tip an iceberg. Waddle On. Waddle on indeed. 
Operation Blackout Operation Blackout was an EPF event taking place around November 14th through December 6th, 2012. To give a quick rundown, it all starts on November 8th where it was reported that Gary the Gadget Guy had went missing. Soon the other agent would get captured and it was left to you to stop Herbert's plan. What was his plan you may ask? Oh, it basically Herbert was using a solar laser to steal the sun's energy, blow up the EPF, keep the island into frozen darkness, you know, nothing serious. The event was praised by fans and holds the record for the most penguins logged in at once, standing at 1.8 million on November 24th, 2012, the same day it was revealed that Antarctic was the director of the EPF, something many have theorized for years until now. If you want to know more about Operation Blackout, I highly suggest watching this video by Kien Carlil who goes on a full breakdown on Operation Blackout and why it was so special. Link will be in the description. Miniclip Today's generation may know Miniclip as a mobile game developer responsible for games such as Agario and 8-Ball Pool, but between 2001 and 2022, Miniclip was a website that hosted a bunch of Flash games including Club Penguin, which would appear on the website's top 10 games for several years. The website would even serve as a forum where users have had discussions and even requested for some items to be added. One item in particular was for a blue cape to be added as an alternative to the red cape, and so they added it. In April of 2022, Miniclip announced that it would shut down its browser game portal after 20 years to focus on their mobile game division, with all the games being removed two months later. The PSA and EPF The Penguin's Secret Agency, or a PSA for short, was Club Penguin's fictional secret agency that serves to keep Club Penguin safe. They're basically the FBI if you say f Throughout the years, the PSA's main objective was to keep Club Penguin safe from Kerbert and Klutzy, where you would compete special missions and unlock rewards. In May of 2010, the PSA HQ along the sports shop was destroyed in a popcorn explosion. This caused the PSA to dissolve and get replaced with the Elite Penguin Force or EPF. The EPF had existed two years prior as a hidden room in the HQ only accessible to owners of the Club Penguin Elite Penguin Force video game, where it came with a code inside to unlock. After the explosion, the PSA agents were now EPF agents. Instead of special missions, the field ops would be released weekly until they were replaced with operation parties. Despite the EPF being a secret, on Club Penguin's final issue, they revealed that the everyday phoning facility was in fact a spy agency. Unlock items online. This was a feature in Club Penguin that allowed penguins to obtain items by entering a code online. To obtain, you had to buy certain Club Penguin merchandise like plushies or games, and then you go to the icon, click on the code, and enter it. Once you redeemed it, it gave you access to a book called the Treasure Book, which allowed you to pick two items for each code. The unlockable items were all clothing items, coins, or puffles. The book would update whenever a new plush series would release. The Moss Key Pin Just like the key to the captain's quarters, the Moss Key was another pin that served as an actual key to a room. To obtain this item, the player would need to go play Puffle Rescue and play the underwater levels. After collecting the first puffle, a giant squid would appear where you would need to follow it and reach a secret part of the level. There you will see a set of stairs where it will teleport you to a secret underwater room where you would get the Moss Key Pin. And with the key, underneath the forest you can access the door that takes you to the same underground room. Hashtag Biss on Mickey Hashtag Biss on Mickey was a Twitter movement that could have been avoided if Club Penguin gave their users a f***ing pair of pants. Biss on Mickey stems from a streamer by the name of Quackity who did a raid on Club Penguin Island in September of 2018. I should have mentioned that Quackity is also known within the Club Penguin moderation team as he had previously raided the game earlier that year. And we're probably aware of the upcoming raid. During the raid, certain words were being filtered such as the word pants, possibly due to players spamming the word. This would make Quackity go on Twitter and tweet using the hashtag BissOnMickey where it would go trending on Twitter. Ultimately, this pissed the mouse and Disney took immediate action by banning users and blocking people on Twitter. I highly recommend watching these VODs, they're pretty funny in my opinion. Penguin Chat 3 This was the third installment of the Penguin Chat series, what else? The game was released on March of 2005 until it closed on October 28th of the same year, four days after Club Penguin was released. By looking at it, it looks like the original Club Penguin, although with limitations and minor differences. There wasn't much you can do, as Penguin Chat was simply a chat room, so there was no memberships or games. The only rooms that you could have entered were the town, coffee shop, nightclub, boiler room and some rooms under construction. And my favorite room. The gift shop also served a different purpose. Rather than an actual gift shop, it was like a store where you can buy real shirts with real money. 
all blue. This was the default color of the penguin itself. The color is a bit lighter than the regular blue and dates back to the days of penguin chat. While it so happens to be the default color, the color itself cannot be available to the player. The color could only be seen by a couple of penguins, most notably Gary the Gadget Guy, as well as some NPCs and occasional bugs which trigger the color. Spam bots. Spam bots are users that are auto-generated and controlled by a computer program. They would walk at the same pace and start to spam an item, often being horns, whistles, gongs, etc. Often this would lead to a ban if caught using them. Experimental Penguins This was an online chat room that was one of the earliest concepts to what would ultimately become Club Penguin. Launched in July of 2000, this quote unquote game really had nothing to offer other than waddling around and chatting with other penguins in a white room with, you know, not a lot of scenery. That didn't stop the growth of Experimental Penguins as it would receive more than 25,000 visitors spending an average of 20 minutes in September of that year. Due to the massive success of the game, in December the game would shut down in favor of working on a better server. And in January of 2003, Penguin Chat 2 would launch as a sequel to Experimental Penguins. CPPSs Club Penguin Private Servers, commonly abbreviated as CPPS, is exactly what they are. Emulated servers of Club Penguin which aren't endorsed by Disney. With private servers, admins can basically implement any rules such as cursing, choose an era of Club Penguin, vintage or modern, free items and membership, as well as custom rooms. The popular CPPSs tend to play by the rules and act like normal Club Penguin. Although I must advise to anyone that anyone who plays these servers must be aware of who are behind the curtains and to protect your data and yourself online. CPPSs have gotten themselves into controversies thanks to some bad actors. More on that later. EPF Code Language The EPF uses a code language that is also known as Tic-Tac-Toe Code. When I was younger, I really had no clue on how it was made, but with a developed brain now, uh, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty easy language to crack once you know it. Basically, you make three 3x3 three three grids and add X's on every corner of the second grid and O's on the third one, and then you start to add the letters and boom, easy to understand. Before we continue guys, let's take a second and thank in today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is running a huge discount where you can get a 3 year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee by using the link in the description. A VPN or a virtual private network is a tool that helps you put all your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel. That way, it protects your data and sensitive information from hackers and other malicious malware by changing your location and IP address. And with Atlas VPN's friendly UI, it's easier than ever to stay protected and surf the international web. Using Atlas VPN can get you access to reach Lock content. By changing your location, you'll have access to any Netflix catalog around the world. If you're still not convinced, Atlas VPN can also help you save money on travel. Turning on your VPN can alter prices on airlines and hotels, which often drop to a lower price based on where you are set. Atlas VPN is available on Windows, Apple, iOS, and Android, and by using the link in the description, you can get a 3-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This offer is only available for a limited time, so try it out while you can. Thank you so much Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Now, let's continue. Club Penguin Rewritten Club Penguin Rewritten was a Club Penguin private server that launched a month before the official game's closure. The game was effectively an identical clone of Club Penguin and was made to help preserve the game, as well as add some new variety to make it fresh. Club Penguin Rewritten would become one of the most popular CPPSs during the COVID-19 pandemic, gaining upwards of over 10 million users. Tragically, it wouldn't last forever. On April 13, 2022, Club Penguin Rewritten was shut down. One of the moderators on the website's Discord server explained that the game was shutting down as a full request by Disney and would be investigated for copyright violations. Three people affiliated would get arrested, but then they would be released just a day later. The website had also been altered from a familiar blue screen to an empty black void with the message, this site has been taken over by Operation Creative, Police Intellectual Property Crime Unit. Pretty unsettling coming from a website meant for children at the end of the day if you ask me. Many say that Club Penguin rewritten was shut down due to ads on the website, and when it comes to monetizing an IP that isn't yours, it's a no-go. It sucks, but it is what it is. Club Penguin Online Okay, so Club Penguin Online is yet another CPPS, but more unhinged. This private server is notorious for being one of the most dangerous private servers aimed at children due to a lack of moderation, let alone any care, and the website was filled with racist, homophobic, and sexual messages, all unfiltered, all out there for everyone to see with ads all around. 
One of the moderators would ultimately expose the dark truth behind Club Penguin Online, which would lead to the closure and arrest of the owner. We will get to reasons why as we go down the iceberg. TV specials. During 2014 and 2015, Disney Channel aired three 22-minute stop-motion TV specials based on Club Penguin. These three specials were We Wish You a Merry Walrus, Club Penguin, Monster Beach Party, and Club Penguin Halloween Panic. Based on my experiences, these specials really aren't that bad if I say so myself. They're generic, but they're not cringe or anything. The specials aired only a handful of times due to Club Penguin no longer being on operations. Because of that, these specials would later fall into obscurity. Rockhopper Island Rockhopper Island was the island that Rockhopper resided in. They don't really go into much detail other than the island is tropical and is home to red puffles. Just like the iceberg rumor, rumors have also spread on how to get to Rockhopper Island. One of the most famous rumors involved waiting until the migrator leaves. Another fake rumor includes playing Jetpack Joyride and magically flying there. I really miss that. I really miss this time of the internet. In a Q&A blog post from Polo Field, one of the comments asked if the penguins will ever visit the island of Rockhopper, to which Polo Field replied, perhaps one day. With the game no longer being up, Rockhopper Island remains as an urban legend in the Club Penguin community. DJ Max. This was an NPC player in Penguin Chat 3 who was red and wore headphones. Not much is known about this character, perhaps this was a planned mascot that never got developed, or just maybe an early prototype of Cadence, who knows. Unregistered Hypercam 2. Hypercam 2 was a screen captured software developed by Hyperonics back in the early 2000s. The reason for its inclusion was due to the massive amount of Club Penguin videos on YouTube during the late 2000s, where almost every 9 out of 10 videos rocked an unregistered Hypercam 2 logo on the upper left corner of the video. Its widespread use would allow it to become a symbol of YouTube's past. Lorem Ipsum Lorem Ipsum is a template of Latin words commonly used in the publishing industry that is used to give a visual form to a document. In this scenario, during Club Penguin's beta testing, the front page of the newspaper didn't have any proper text. Rather, it used the Lorem Ipsum text, alongside a placeholder name of the Daily Penguin. The reason for the placeholder was that the developers were working on something else, but yeah, they just didn't have anything typed in. This will later be altered after beta testing. Skull Emoticon The Skull Emoticon is an icon that used to be in the game. Although in late 2007, it was removed alongside the heart email due to complaints that they were being misused, mainly to implicate death to someone or unwanted harassment. The heart would later be added again after a few months due to popular demand. The skull, however, would remain removed and would only be seen on the list of blocked users. Beta Blue was unlockable. This is likely referring to a rumor believing that Old Blue was an unlockable item, but it's not the case, and trying to hack it can result in a ban. The Red Arcade Machine This machine was located at the Dance Club Lounge and would be unplugged for the remainder of its existence. It wouldn't be until they were repurposed for the fair of 2014 and 2015, where it would transport you into an 8-bit world. The reason for it being used a limited amount of times is that the matrix can overheat and can cause the penguins to get stuck in the world. Unused Colors Throughout the lifespan of Club Penguin, there were seven colors that were either unreleased, unused, or simply bait. They were Sensei Grey, Dot Lavender, Lavender, Maroon, Old Blue, Dark Black, and Light Purple. Sensei Grey and Dot Lavender are colors only exclusive to Sensei and Dot. Hacking them into your account will result in a ban. Lavender and Maroon were both candidates for a color vote. Lavender was a color and lost in both 2006 and 2009 to both Lime Green and Aqua. Old Blue, as mentioned earlier, is the Penguin's dummy color, and Light Purple is a color that was once accessible in Penguin Chat 3. Dark Black was like a placeholder color similar to Old Blue, but for games whenever the game needed to determine the Penguin color. Ballistic Biscuit. This is the first game ever released by the creator of Club Penguin, Lance Preeb, aka R Snail. To many Club Penguin fans, this game looks familiar as this same game would be repurposed to make Hydro Hopper. To explain this game to a younger generation, think of it like Subway Surfers but really slow. Other reskins of Ballistic Biscuit had also existed too. One well known example is a VeggieTales clone called Larry's Wild Ride, Shadows Around the Island. Following the Halloween party of 2008, several shadows were seen across the island. The shadows Shadows would appear for a split second during the lightning storm that was happening during the party. These would actually be teasers to hype the debut of ninjas, something that were nothing more of rumors at the time. Following the Halloween party, lightning had struck the dojo and this is where the dig out the dojo event began. This would also make the dojo from a secret location into one of the most developed locations in all of Club Penguin. And it all started with these shadows seen around the island. Snow Blasters Snow Blasters was the original idea that R. Snow had before Club Penguin, Experimental Penguins, and Penguin Chat. 
He wanted Snowblasters to be a free, advanced, warish multiplayer with thousands of players on screen. Gee, that sounds awfully familiar. He goes on by saying that he wanted players to build forts using blocks so that they can stack to make their forts higher and higher. Wait, did Arsenal come up with the original concept of Fortnite? Regardless, Snowblasters was never released due to Arsenal being too busy with other commission projects, and by late 2002 was interested in working on a successor to Experimental Penguins. Something that you may have noticed is that the Snowblasters logo looks very similar to Club Penguins, so that's just something worth noting. Cuckoo Clock In the Ski Lodge, a cuckoo clock goes off every 30 minutes. I also found out that this cuckoo clock has a name. It's Fred. That, that's pretty much it. Ninjas in Penguin Chat 3. In Penguin Chat 3, when pressing the letter N in the choose your penguin's color, you would unlock a penguin with a ninja outfit alongside a sword. In a blog from August 2005, Arsenal confirmed that ninjas would arrive one day. Thankfully, he stuck to his promise. Bait items. Bait items are exactly what they sound like. They're non-existent items that are used to trick cheaters into obtaining. That way, it catches them in the act and will result in a ban. The items don't have a visual icon and usually appear with an X. There is a list available of all the bait items. Some of the items listed are that of items that belong to a mascot, such as Rockhopper's beard, Sensei's hat, Gary's lab coat, or some absurd item like cement shoes, bling bling medallion, or an orange jumpsuit. Karjitsu's Shadow This was a theorized fifth Karjitsu game rumored to exist. The rumor began when fans noticed the small gem on the center of the amulet. Speculation around Shadow grew that the Club Penguin staff considered to make it a reality. On June 1st, 2011, four items forming a Shadow-themed ninja suit was added to Club Penguin's files. The Shadow suit wasn't accessible unless via hacking, but they were in the game. Along with their own emote, Shadow Ninjas would also appear in Karjitsu as their own power card. Unfortunately, a Shadow Element was never introduced before the game shut down. Coffee Shop Locked Back Room The locked back room is referring to the door that is outside of you in the coffee shop. The door can be seen in PSA missions, as well as on the bottom when the room was redesigned. People are referring to where it leads to, but it's pretty self-explanatory that it just leads to the back where you play bean counters. Unused rooms. Club Penguin has at least three rooms that ended up getting scrapped. The first room was the welcome room. This room was originally designed to serve as an intro to Club Penguin. It was first seen on the awesome official guide to Club Penguin, telling the reader that it was coming soon. The location was initially going to have a tour guide building, which would have served as a replacement for the tour booth at the ski village, a small pavilion, and a water fountain with a news board that would have allowed players to create posters to advertise igloo parties. Eventually, the idea for the room was scrapped, realizing it was useless to introduce the player to Club Penguin as the job to introduce the player belongs to the town. The next room to go unused is the Fog Forest. This room was actually in the game between March 13th through the 20th, 2014 and was only visited by using a certain login code. Logging into the world will spawn you on the top left corner, causing you to get stuck. This room would later be removed when the login code was replaced with the airport, a party room used for the Muppets World Tour party. The last room is really not a room but rather a building, the secret shack at the ski hill. According to R. Snail on Club Penguin's 10th anniversary livestream, he said that the shack was originally planned to be a place where players could watch Club Penguin's staff work on projects or send in help requests. However, this feature was never done and it was left abandoned. The shack would later get removed when the room received a facelift in January 2014. Early Plaza Concept Art in my opinion, I find the plaza to be one of the most unique rooms in the game as it's seen the most changes implemented out of any room in Club Penguin. Hear me out. Some early concept art shows prototypes of what the plaza was originally going to look like. In this one, it was originally going to have a bowling alley, a hot dog stand, and an early version of the pizza parlor. Not much info regarding this iteration is really out there, so let's move on. The next early concept is a lot similar to the original plaza with a few minor alterations. The most eye-catching is that the dojo was originally planned to be in the plaza instead of the mountains. The reason for the change might be due to ninjas or karjitsu not being developed yet in the game, which would have left the room vacant, so they just pushed it as a secret room for the time being. Another significant difference is the pet shop. Before Puffles were created, they used real life animals as a placeholder until Puffles were finalized. The plaza would later be added in 2006 with just two buildings and the rest is history. 
Club Penguin Island was originally an expansion. I'm not sure what this is all about, but I'm guessing that this was a rumor speculating that Club Penguin Island was originally going to be an expansion and not a replacement, although there's no evidence or conversation about that being the point. Buildings behind the town center. So there was some new information regarding this as I was typing this. This is referring to the original icons of the old map where it looked like this. As you can see, this town appeared to have seven buildings, whereas the town end game has three. Initially, many speculated that this was just Club Penguin drawing the town like for the aesthetics. However, according to a post by Twitter user Club Penguin Lore reveals something familiar. This early concept appears to be the original version for the town, with the buildings looking familiar familiar to the ones in the map. Not only does this concept show an early version of the town, but it also shows an early version of the dock as well as the lighthouse using the same design as seen on the map. According to ScreenHog, it was an early prototype before walking space was added. Another thing worth noting is that some early room concept art did not have an idea on how rooms were planned as many of them seemed to be lacking any walking space. Game Day Assets in Fortune Street Club Penguin Game Day was a 2010 video game released for the Wii. The game was pretty much a Mario Party clone and is your typical 2010 Wii game. According to the cutting room floor, Fortune Street, a game developed by Square Enix for the Wii, for some reason has a file which contains the placeholder texture from Club Penguin Game Day. These two games don't have affiliation and the reason for it being in the files was due to the developers accidentally copying over files used in the Please Wear the Wiimote wrist strap screen from Game Day day. Sanity 1. According to an old Club Penguin fan page, Sanity 1 was a Club Penguin hacker known for creating CP Trainer, which was an application used to hack the game, get unlimited coins, any item, or just have malicious intentions. Sanity 1 has also gone through several other Penguin backups, and it goes on by saying that Sanity was responsible for multiple hacks from several key members of the Club Penguin staff such as Billy Bob and Happy 77. Sanity is often credited for starting the early rumors of how to become a ninja as early as September 2006, which if you don't know, the early myth started out by penguins claiming to become a ninja by standing in the dojo for 30 minutes. Sanity1 posted on his blog in April of 2008 for a final time that he will stop hacking Club Penguin and focus on hacking other games, and has stopped appearing since 2013. Belize. Belize is a nation on the eastern coast of Central America. In the last page of Club Penguin's clothing catalog, there was a page filled with flag pins, with most of them being flags of well-known countries. Despite Belize being a small country, the flag was added as a small reference to Chris Preeb. Chris was a programmer who worked remotely in Belize and his brother to Lance Preeb. To show that Chris isn't forgotten, a Belize pin was added in his honor. Mod reports were useless. This was a rumor speculating that the mod reports you submitted to a player never really did anything or had no consequences ever happening. I kind of agree with this, maybe I'm just saying that because I reported anyone who looked at me the wrong way, but whatever. Club Penguin in Vietnam This is reference to a viral clip on YouTube titled Club Penguin in the Vietnam War 1955-1975 through Colorized where it shows penguin soldiers, eerily similar to the ones to Club Penguin, participating in what appears to be the Vietnam War. This clip is actually from the 1985 Japanese film, Penguin's Memory, Shiawaz Monotagari. I don't know if I pronounced that right. The story follows about a penguin named Mike, who befriends two soldiers named Al and Tom. Sadly, the two get killed during the war, and Mike is the only one who survives. After the war, Mike returns home after getting injured from combat and his friends and family throw him a hero's welcome. Sadly, Mike doesn't really feel that way and decides to leave home to find purpose in life. After winding up in Lake City, Florida, he meets someone named Jill. Although there's some drama with her, such as her father trying to arrange a marriage with someone else. There's more to the story, but that's pretty much the premise. At first going into this movie, I thought this would be like a funny movie, you know, because haha, club penguins and guns, but no, honestly, this was a pretty deep and emotional movie. I got post-movie depression from this movie. These penguin characters also exist outside the movie itself. These penguins are based off a beer brand in Japan called Suntory Beer, which uses the exact same penguins in the labels and commercials. It's thanks to the popularity of the commercials that this movie was made, despite not even having a mention of beer at all. 
Operation Swarm. This was a cancelled event set to take place for Club Penguin rewritten, however it was later delayed to December. But when December came around, it was confirmed that Operation Swarm was cancelled due to it conflicting with the holiday party. The operation was later confirmed to happen sometime in 2022, but due to Disney shutting down Club Penguin rewritten, the event never occurred. Club Penguin Shutdown Club Penguin Shutdown is a fan-made animated web series created by Near Human Intelligence. The series takes place weeks after Club Penguin's shutdown in 2017, which has now turned the island into a dark desolate area divided by several gangs who all turn against each other for survival. The series mimics the style of the actual Club Penguin and really puts a creative dark twist for a children's game. I highly recommend giving it a watch. Puffle Origins Before Puffles got discovered in November of 2005, they were still in the concept phase. These were concepts for what the pet of Club Penguin would be. Ultimately, the team would grab bits of ideas from these concepts to mash them into creating the first Puffle. At first, they weren't called Puffles, they were just called Furballs. It wouldn't be until a contest was held to name the creature. On December 8, 2005, the name Puffle was selected out of 3,000 names, with three penguins being chosen the winner. Piffle. Piffles are a reference to an old meme featuring an edit of a red color icon. Piffles are also known to like pie, and that's pretty much it. Piffles aren't real in case you didn't know that. Antarctica Flag The Antarctica Flag is a bait item. As earlier mentioned, bait items are used to trick hackers into obtaining them. Not to mention, Antarctica doesn't even have a flag, so you'd have to be pretty naive to fall for this. Sony Wanted Club Penguin in May of 2007, reports emerged that Sony had been interested in purchasing Club Penguin for roughly $500 million. Although just a month later, it was reported that Disney would purchase Club Penguin for $700 million, half of which was paid in front whereas the other half would be received if performance targets were met by 2009, in which they did not meet. Looking back at it, it might have been better if they went with Sony. Perhaps we could have seen Club Penguin evolve from a Flash game to a much more massive franchise. Polar Bear Admins During early development, it was suggested for admins to appear as polar bears. However, the reason for this idea being scrapped was due to their uniqueness, which would cause players to swarm the polar bear and make it difficult to manage the situation. Animations of the polar bear would be made of it walking, sitting, and standing. These never ended up being used. Old Rainbow and Gold Puffle Rumors this is referring to the early videos uploaded to YouTube on how to obtain a gold or rainbow puffle, usually with really bad Photoshop. Several children, including myself, felt victim to the spread of misinformation. Fortunately, gold and rainbow puffles would become available in 2013 to the delight of fans. Rock Opera and Sensei are related. This is yet another rumored by fans speculating that Rock Opera and Sensei are brothers. The reason for that case is that they both have natural facial hair and that's literally it. It is obviously not true as both Rockhopper and Sensei have a massive age gap, making their chances of even being brothers slim to none. Claudius This was a scrap villain character that was planned to appear in Club Penguin. Claudius was said to be one of the multiple crap villains that were going to live in a kingdom right below Club Penguin Island. It was set to debut in a crab mob storyline, whatever that means, but this was ultimately scrapped. The character would make a few silhouettes and cameos but was ultimately forgotten about. Rockhopper polluted the Soda Seas. The Soda Seas is an ocean located southwest of Club Penguin. When playing Aqua Grabber and going into the Soda Seas level, the water is shown to be purple due to cream soda barrels being scattered all across the island. The entry suggests that Rockhopper is the one responsible for the ocean becoming polluted. There seems to be a pattern to suggest that this is in fact true. On January 7th, 2008, Rockhopper's ship, the Migrator, unexpectedly hit an iceberg and sank. This caused Gary the Gadget Guy to build a submarine to salvage parts from the Migrator. This new submarine would become the Aqua Grabber. Once the ship was salvaged, the only things missing were the barrels around the ship. Just six months later, the Soda Seas level was added where you must clean up the ocean by picking up barrels. 
Based on the timeline, it is possible that once the migrator sunk, the only items that were not salvaged were the tons of barrels of cream soda located all over the ship. And due to neglect, the oceans have become polluted, thanks to this monster. The reason Happy 77 quit. Happy 77, aka Holly, was a mod that also served as a blogger and writer for Club Penguin, and has been around since the days of Penguin Chat 3. In October 2012, she wrote a final blog announcing her departure from Club Penguin so she can focus on raising her children. I think this entry is trying to allude to the fact that there must have been a falling out that caused Happy to leave Club Penguin. There is no evidence supporting this claim though. Net Disaster Net Disaster is a prank site launched in 2005 where the website allowed users to simulate fake disasters by selecting a feature such as meteorites, UFOs, lasers, spilled coffee, etc. The website was popular among Club Penguin fans and was used in early videos featuring kids using it to create pranks and hoaxes on quote, how to destroy Club Penguin. The website has gotten into issues by companies such as Yahoo and eBay for phishing. Unfortunately, the website's engine would get removed in 2010. Secret Gunoichi Clan In issue 460 of the Club Penguin Times, Sensei revealed a few mysteries such as him mentioning that he has a brother, you can master the arts of shadow and cheese, as well as a secret ninja clan of Gunoichi. Gunoichis are female ninjas, so it's theorized that they were going to include outfits of female ninjas. However, no outfits would ever be released and Gunoichis would never be mentioned again. Backroom SWF SWF files or small web formats are Adobe Flash files and long story short, think of them like texture packs. SWF files are basically the assets of Club Penguin which can be anything, buildings, furniture, items, postcards. Anyways, I think backroom SWF is referring to this image in a technical term, perhaps someone was playing around with Adobe and added the backrooms as a background, I don't know. Mods were bots. This is a speculation that moderators on servers were actually bots. This could make sense as it would be easier for a bot to filter bad words rather than a human. I'm guessing human mods dealt with issues such as harassment and cheating, but yeah, that's my viewpoint. Magenta Puffle The Magenta Puffle or Hot Pink Puffle was a rumored color to be introduced in Club Penguin around 2012. It was rumored due to the Puffle Party logo between 2009 and 2011 predicting three colors, white, orange, and brown, with a magenta Y being the only color that is an official. But when 2012 rolled around, the Puffle Party got an entirely new logo with no Magenta Puffle being released. As a matter of fact, no basic color would be released after brown. So it might have been possible that this was scrapped due to developers wanting to go in a different direction with puffles. Perhaps this color was maybe too similar to pink, who knows, I sure don't. Tour Undefined Dialogue If the player attempted to give a tour while in an igloo, it would cause the player to say undefined. This was later fixed so that no text would display. Snowcat. The Snowcat is a yellow vehicle that has become an easter egg as it has made several appearances as early as experimental penguins to Penguin Chat 3 to as far as Club Penguin Island. On the October 2005 Penguin Style magazine, Snowcats were actually advertised as an item on sale, but was out of stock. This was going to be a planned item as they existed in Penguin Chat 3, however due to their size, it was thought that they would obstruct doorways and gameplay, so it was later scrapped. Club Penguin Magazine. In countries like the UK, Brazil, or Australia, Club Penguin had a magazine where it featured fan artwork, puzzles, and some free goodies such as membership, some physical items, and free coins. Penguins who were also published in the magazine would receive postcards and awards for their fan work. Penguin World Penguin World was a Facebook game release in 2010. According to a game review from Game Zebo, Penguin World's concept was about a penguin looking for lost pottery whilst fighting off polar bears. This game played like a treasure hunting game like Treasure Isle and the atmosphere like Club Penguin. The game also allowed you to gather resources and decorate your igloo and home island. Today, the game is no longer playable as most Facebook games are now unavailable. June 20th, 2011 Shutdown On June 20th, 2011, players were greeted to a completely different homepage. At first, many assumed that the website was hacked, when in reality, it was due to the domain of clubpenguin.com expiring. The notice was even sent to Disney multiple times prior to the downtime, but for some reason, Disney had ignored it, and it wouldn't be until it had been reported. 
Disney would fix the issue and the website would return to normal the following day. Unused Dot Design Hidden inside Club Penguin Elite Penguin Force, there are some early sprites of Dot. She appears to have black hair alongside a black vest compared to the blonde hair and purple trench coat in the final version. It could be that this was a temporary generic placeholder until a final version was made. Why Beds Aren't in the Game one thing that players have noticed or even realized just now is that why aren't beds in the game? And well, the answer is pretty simple. Penguins tend to sleep standing up. Not to mention Club Penguin is in always day mode, so beds are pretty useless. I tend to think that there's more to this as it probably prevents weirdos from getting suggested with children online. I mean, it just makes sense. I also forgot to mention that owning a bed is a sin because either owning the bunk bed or the sleeping bag can result in a ban because spoiler alert, they're bait items. Early lost SWF file. There wasn't much information about this, but according to a Lost Media forums and wiki articles, many of Club Penguin's earliest assets and SWF files from 2005 to 2010 have been lost to time, with many of them only existing by old screenshots and videos. Although some assets of early parties have been recreated by fans, Octi is alive. Octi is a purple inflatable octopus that is seen in several of the early parties. Based on the name of the entry, it is speculated that this inflatable balloon might be alive after all. According to Rockhopper's journal, he wrote that he witnessed an octopus heading towards Club Penguin wearing a wig. During the Halloween party, you can see Octi with a wig as well, meaning that it was exactly the same octopus he was referring to. This could suggest that Octi is a sentient inflatable octopus. Kind of uncanny if you think about it. Why so little buildings? This is likely pointing out that Club Penguin really doesn't have a lot of buildings. This makes people wonder where are the schools, the grocery stores, the factories, how do they get the ingredients? for pizzas, where do the coffee trucks come from? At the end of the day, it's a web browser game. Does it really fucking matter? 1999 Experimental Penguins build. This is speculating of an earlier build of Experimental Penguins predating back to 1999, a year before its launch. While Arsenal had the idea to make a multiplayer game with penguins in 1999, any form of a game just does not exist. Test one dot breeze. Test 1 was an unused test map in Club Penguin Game Day. The map featured a small island with a skybox and very early water textures on it. What makes this file a bit more unique are the files left inside Test 1, including Sensei's gray texture. This was left out due to Sensei being cut from the game, as well as a realistic fish texture and a human boy texture. Neither texture was used in the game, and these were perhaps used for testing purposes. Pookies. Okay, so this is where we crank the horrors up to 11. Pookies were players on Club Penguin that were spotted in busy servers at the pet shop. They would often wear yellow and speak in a cutesy baby dialogue like Please pick me, play with me, hello, I feel like throwing up just saying this. Pookies would dress up wearing tiaras, dresses, wings, diva sunglasses, asking to be adopted, calling their future parents Dadas and Moo Moos. It's really nothing more than some creepy role playing, although many claim it to be much more sinister in a way to lure victims due to the absurd nature of this activity. Four Chan raids. Just like Habbo Hotel, Club Penguin has fallen victim to Four Chan raids. These raids would get arranged by certain Club Penguin armies, the most infamous being the Purple Republic. The Purple Republic identified themselves as Purple Penguins in minor helmets who would act like complete degenerates and annoy the public and even arrange themselves in a specific icon from a certain German army back in World War II. Dord 578. You know, I really don't know what this is honestly talking about. I thought it would be interesting, but just searching the name takes me to other iceberg charts. But from the help of some comments, Dord 578 was a player who used private servers for illegal purposes. In spite of that, no info regarding this name exists, although a story where someone using a platform for malicious purposes doesn't sound too far-fetched. Club Penguin Online Controversy The Club Penguin Online controversy has unfortunately tainted the innocence and has left a nasty mark on the franchise. The news regarding Club Penguin Online was so bad many news outlets and YouTubers called out Disney to take the matters into their own hands. By April 2020, Club Penguin Online would have over 700 million registered users. <laughs> Did I say 700 million? <laughs> By April 2020, Club Penguin Online would have over 7 million registered users. Yet what people didn't realize was that the person on top would be the least qualified person to own a server of this magnitude. 
The owner, better known as Riley as his alias, played dirty to keep Club Penguin Online on top by using anti-competitive tactics such as threats of hacking, raiding, and DDoS attacks to smaller owners, which would cause them to shut down in fear of those threats. Many were scared to speak up as Riley has threatened to leak personal information numerous times. What truly made this situation downright criminal is that Riley would be in contact with several underage girls who would ask for explicit images in order for them to receive an admin role. Truly disgusting behavior. It wouldn't be until someone by the name of Joey Hughes uploaded a video that exposed Riley for his actions as well as the flaws of not being the computer hacker he claims to be. This video would get the attention of some big YouTubers including some order Ordinary Gamers, Kavos, Tamago, and several others. And on May 15, 2020, Disney issued a DMCA takedown, immediately shutting down Club Penguin online once and for all. Riley would be arrested for literal CP charges and so would end the story of Club Penguin online. Club Penguin online serves as an example of what happens when great power goes in the wrong hands. Last but not least, the real reason Disney killed the Club Penguin franchise. As big as a franchise Club Penguin became thanks to the help of Disney, it was ultimately the reason the game became irrelevant. I think the very reason Club Penguin's demise was due to the game not being able to attract a new audience while at the same time detract old fans. In 2012, Club Penguin started to become a little more advertiser friendly and began to host several parties that featured IPs from Disney, starting with the Marvel superhero takeover in 2012. And at first, it was great promotion and definitely received attention from casuals in the mainstream audience. But over time, they started becoming more frequent and less special and more of an advertisement. This would also ruin core elements of the game such as oversaturation of puffles and less focus to the core gameplay. Not to mention over time more features started to go behind a membership paywall, something that developers were highly against. The final nail in the coffin was obviously the failure of Club Penguin Island. I know, it's a shocker. The story has been told a million times. The game was already doomed from the start trying to fill in the shoes of the original Club Penguin and when it came out, it already felt like a knockoff of something great and now it was gone. And since December 2018, the Club Penguin franchise has remained dormant in the grasp of Disney. The question remains, do you think Club Penguin can ever make a comeback? Me personally, I think it's only possible if Disney sells it. Time will tell. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Other than that, this wraps up the definitive Club Penguin iceberg. Thank you so much if you made it to the end. Please consider subscribing to the channel and go check out my other links. Other than that, my name is Lewis and I am out.